please be advised. This show contains adult language, violent acts, and triggering situations. Not advised for children under the age of 13. Hi, Sam. How have you been? Fine. Did you go to your N.A. meeting on Monday? You know I didn't. You know that's part of your parole. My tests are clean, so what does it matter? Legally, it matters. And I really wish you would go. I'll think about it. I seriously doubt that. <laughs> are you ready to pick up where we left off? Yep. You gonna tell me what happened to Whitney today? No. No. Well, I suppose I'll have to take what you can give for now. So please. You found Krista's name carved into the tree. What happened next? Q Code presents Baraska. Created by Rebecca Klingle. Starring and produced by Cole Sprouse. Bye, Dad. Dad, come on. Did you really think I was going to let you out without a hug on your first day of school? Please don't do this to me, Dad. Everyone can see in. And? And I was supposed to meet Kyle and Kimber by the flag like five minutes ago. Well, then you better hurry. <sighs> Fine. That's my boy. <sighs> what time is your mom picking you up and where? 3.40 on the corner by the soccer field. Why can't I just take the bus? When you're 14, you can take the bus. But why can't... Until then, I get to drop you off. But if you think it'd look cooler, I'll let you ride in the back seat behind the cage. Oh my god, just stop, Come on, Dad. you like a criminal! Dude, you were supposed to be here like ten minutes ago. I know, sorry. I'm so excited to see Mr. Diamond again. He's so nice, you'll like him, Sam. Oh, stop rubbing it in. I have to see Mrs. Turdy's stupid face every day for the next nine months. She's not that bad. Her class gets to go to Happy Hollow Farm in the spring. That's boring. And she has pet ferrets in her classroom. They smell. You're just mad because she gives homework on the weekends. On the weekends? Okay? That's the distance. Oh, stop. You know I'm going to end up doing most of it for you anyway. Thank Christ for that. Excuse me, Mr. Landy? Oh, fuck. I mean, I meant thank heck for that. <laughs> Ah, you're a little young for that language. Use it often at home, do you? Oh, heavens no. <laughs> you, said, you said heavens no. Shut up. Ah, Mr. Walker. Excited for your first day of seventh grade? Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. Hi, Sheriff Clary. Miss Destaro, how are you? I'm, I'm okay, thank you. Glad to hear it. Are you looking for my dad? He just dropped me off out front. No, I'm here to give a presentation to the sixth graders about school safety. He does it every year. I do. Although last year, weren't you a bit of a disruption during the assembly? Fiona Witten put ice on my back. Mm, and you called her an Eskimo punk bitch, if I recall correctly. Well, she was being one. <laughs> Stay out of trouble if you're going to hang out with this one, Sammy. Now you boys better get back to class. Yes, sir. Why do you suck up to that guy? He's an asshole. He's my dad's boss. Where'd Kimber go? Took off. Probably thought she was going to miss the bell or something. When is the bell? I don't know, in like 15 minutes. That girl needs to learn how to relax. Shit! Sorry. Sorry I'm late. Mr. Walker, I presume? Uh, Sam. Yeah. Well, welcome to Drisking Middle, Sam Walker. You're gonna love it here. 
Best baseball team in the state. Right, kids? Go Grizzlies! Go Grizzlies! All right, we've got about 10 minutes until lunch, so why don't you kids just socialize until the end of the class? Kimber, introduce Mr. Walker around. <laughs> don't worry, Sam. Pretty much everyone's really nice, and you met Phil and Mike this summer. Yeah, but they're in different classes. I know, but we'll see them at lunch. We'll see Kyle at lunch, too, right? Yeah. Oh, crap. What? What's wrong? Those girls looking at us? Um... They're coming over here, Kimber. Quick, what's the deal? Um... Hey, new kid. Are you friends with Kimber? I'm standing right next to her, aren't I? Are you related to her or something? No. Um, of course he's not related to her. He doesn't have orange hair like she does. Oh, well, if you're not related to her, why are you even hanging out with her? I want to hang out with her. Looks like Kimber has another boyfriend. Ew, she can have them both. Nobody wanted to go out with Ginger Kyle anyway. Shut up, Paige. Don't tell me to shut up, Kimber. That's so mean. What? Mr. Starro, please, come up here for a moment. I... But but I didn't do anything. Oh. You guys are messed up. She didn't do anything. We're trying to help you. You should know that if you hang out with Kimber, you're going to be in the ugly kids group. And once you're in that group, you can't leave it ever. Like, ever. Sounds better than the loudmouth bitch group. <sighs> we'll see. Ladies, you know who you are. Come up here, please. Kimber, go sit down. <laughs> <laughs> what did they say to you while I was gone? They said you're too pretty and you make them look gross when you stand next to them, so we have to stay far away. Liar. That looks disgusting. Was it any better at your old school? No, but we had vending machines. Oh man, I wish we had vending machines. I would eat Pop-Tarts for lunch every day. Uh -huh. I was looking for you guys. Man, this line is long. No cuts, Landy. It's not cutting if you're not getting anything. You better not get anything. Relax, Whittaker. What do you think this bag in my hand is? Lunch from home. That was Mrs. Turdy's class. Tverdy. As shitty as I knew it would be. Room is set up by tables, not desks. It's like being in kindergarten again. Uh, can I get a pizza and fries? <sighs> oh, come on. Man, screw you, Landy. Sorry, Whitaker. I prefer your sister. More like his brother. <laughs> Fuck you, Sam. Actually, my brother's dating your sister, new kid. Whitney? Yep, since like August. <laughs> my sister isn't allowed to date. Well, she is. Yeah, it's true. I heard about that. You knew my sister had a boyfriend? Yeah. Why didn't you tell me? I was in denial. Thought I still had a shot with her. As if, Landy. Only girl you have a shot with is your hand. <laughs> Don't laugh at that, you traitor. Tim, give me your hoodie. I'm freezing my balls off. No way, dude. Your balls are not my problem. Well, Halloween's in a few days. Maybe you could go as a eunuch. What's a eunuch? I'll bet your mom would know. <laughs> Ninth graders removed the stop sign again. That's so dangerous. The high school just got out for lunch. Somebody's gonna get hit. Awesome. Every time I hear that skid, I wait for a crash. Maybe even an explosion. Boom! I hope it's the white fire star that gets hit. That guy's always revving his engine at my sister. Oh, yeah. I'd love to see that thing crunched in the street. It probably hit a person, not another car. Oh, in that case, I hope it's Phoebe Dranger. Kyle! Not to kill her, just to mess up her face. <sighs> just a little bit. Hey, Landy. What do you want, Phil? I'm supposed to tell you that Claire Little wants to go out with you. She does? She doesn't even know me. That's probably why she wants to go out with you. Screw you. No messages for you, Sam. Sorry. I could tell Emily you like her, though, if you want. I don't like Emily. Maybe tell your eyes that, since you're always staring at her. So, Landy, what am I telling Claire? Landy. Landy. I don't know. Do you like her, Kyle? 
I mean, I don't know. I, I thought that, dude, why are you looking at Kimber like that? Uh-oh. Do you like Clara or not? It's so easy. Sam, you're an idiot. What did I do? Miss the obvious Kyle. Shut up, Phil! Why? Am I the... Baraska. Ooh, the shiny gentleman kills again. Party tonight at Ambercott? Cal said only babies believe in the shiny gentleman. They do. Phil is just stupid. And what about the names we saw on the tree, Kyle? You've been up there? To Ambercott? Yeah, a couple months ago. After Kristen went missing. And that doesn't mean it's all true, Sam. Just that someone carves names of missing kids in a tree. There's no names on the triple tree. I've seen it. Ambercott isn't the triple tree. We saw the triple tree. It's older. I knew it. It's all true. No, it isn't. You're scaring Kimber. Scaring you, you mean. I'm okay. Walker, had your dad said anything about what happened to Krista Portnick? Sort of. Her parents told Cleary that she ran away to be with her biological dad. Whitney doesn't believe it. Heard my dad fight all the time. Yeah, your sister's smart. Krista definitely got taken by the skinned men. The skinned men aren't real, idiot. Yes, they are. Paige has seen them. Paige Barry? Hey, Barry, get over here. She doesn't have to come over here. We believe you, Phil. Oh, don't worry about her. Okay, she's a sweet girl. When she's not around those two sharks. Yeah, well, she better not say anything about Kimber. What do you want, Phil? Tell them about the skinned men. What about them? You saw them, right? When Lila went missing? Who's Lila? Her older sister. She disappeared like six years ago. I didn't see them, I just heard them. Where did you hear them? Out in the woods, like a day before she went missing. We biked to Ambercott. She was meeting up with her boyfriend, but she had to bring me with because she was babysitting. And what happened? She went up into the treehouse with him and left me on the ground with a notebook and pen for drawing. They were up there forever, and I heard, like... voices in the forest. What did they say? It, it was just... laughing. And screaming. You didn't hear any words? I don't know, maybe. I really don't remember. I was like six. Lila disappeared the next day after track. Can I go now, Phil? Sorry, Paige. I was just proving a point to these guys. <laughs> you didn't prove anything. There was another girl that went missing? Before Krista? There were a lot of people that went missing in that town. How many? I don't know. Less than a hundred, probably. Less than a hundred? That's an insane amount of people, Sam. If that's true, the FBI would have come in. That many people... Less than a hundred. But over decades. Some were drifters. Some weren't even reported as missing by their families. People disappeared and their families didn't report it? Yep. Why? Why wouldn't they want answers? They already had him. What happened next? Whitney. Dad, are you almost done? Just gotta finish the sidewalk, Sammy. You said you'd help and three walls are already done. Are they? Because I think the walls of Fort Walker need to be taller. You can make them taller. Oh, yeah. I'm from Minnesota. I've been building snow forts all my life. The walls keep falling down. Well, let's see what we have here. Oh, well, this isn't bad. You just got to build the bases wider. That's going to take forever. Not when you got your old man helping you. Mom says I'm not allowed to call you old. What she means is you're not allowed to call her old. But you guys are ancient. <laughs> you think 41 is ancient? You're 42. Oh, that's right. It's December. We threw you a party, but you didn't come home. It was just Whitney, Mom, and me. Whitney made you green bean casserole, and Mom and me made a cake. I heard. I was really sorry I missed it, Sammy. Why is work so busy? Because of Krista? The important case is part of it. It's been a lot of work, and there are things that are not adding up. Really? 
Now don't go telling your sister that. I don't want her to worry. She's got a lot of nasty things in her head about what happened to Krista. Well, what did happen to her? Well, we're working on that. Hey, Dad? Yeah? You know that sound we hear in town sometimes? Have you heard it? It's like an animal screaming, but, you know, really loud. Have you heard it? Coming down off the mountain? Yeah. Yes, I heard it a few times over the summer. Reckon it's logging equipment. Logging equipment sounds like that? Absolutely does. Oh. Because I heard it was a monster who lives in the woods called the Shiny Gentleman. And that there's this place called Baraska and there are skinned men who take people from town and feed them to the monster. Have you heard that? Skinned men? Yeah. And that's what they call them. That's what who calls them? That's what who calls them, Sam? Um, I don't remember. Oh, now you're gonna lie to me? I'm not- This sounds a lot like the crap Whitney's been going on about. Monsters, taking people, sacrifices- Sacrifices? This is all your sister, isn't it? It wasn't her! I heard it at school! Whitney! Dad, I heard it at school! Whitney, get out here! What? She didn't do anything! What didn't I do? Have you been trying to scare your brother? Oh, as if I'd waste my time. Have you been telling Sam stories about skinned men and monsters in the woods? No, I don't even talk to him. Well, the garbage coming out of his mouth sounds a hell of a lot like the insane theories you have on Krista Portnick's case. They're not theories, it's what I've heard. Whitney, he's 12 years old. That's why I wouldn't have talked to him. He's a goddamn baby. You watch your language in my house. I'm not a baby, I know more than you. You don't know anything. Yes, I do. I know you have a boyfriend. No, I don't. What boyfriend? Kevin Whittaker. She's been dating him since the start of school. Shut up! And she sneaks out sometimes to see him. I've heard her leave at night. I hate you! I hate you so much! Whitney, get in your room. He's a liar! Stop blaming your brother! I don't want to hear about a boyfriend. Now just get in your room! He's lying! No, I'm not! I'm going to call your mother and the three of us are going to have a talk. Get in your room! I have no fucking brother. I hate you, Sam. I hate you, too! No! I'm not a liar. I got a link box. I've been practicing at the reckoning. I can kick both of your asses now. You wish. What's the best thing you got for Christmas? I got a Blizzard's parka. Want to see it? It's in my locker. I wasn't talking to you, Walker. I was talking to Kay. I want to see your parka, Sam. I'll show you later. What did you get? Oh, um, I got this for my mom. Whoa, I've never seen a blue pearl before. Is it real? It's cool even if it isn't real. It is real. She got this necklace in Orlando when she went to visit my aunt. It's... Ugh. Whoa, I got you. What the hell? Is that Phoebe Dranger? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Phoebe. Looks like your eyesight is as bad as your nose job. Did she get a nose job? I don't know, but she needs one. <laughs> don't sweat those girls, Kemper. Nobody likes them. People are just nice to Phoebe because she's related to the Prescotts. I hate those girls. Like, I really hate them. I know. They're bitches. Kimber never does anything to anybody. They're just jealous of her. I should get to class and make sure they don't say anything to her. No class until after lunch. There's an assembly this morning. An assembly for what? Boring stuff. Come on, you better go now so we can get the seeds at the back. There's Kimber. Third row from the back. She saved his seats. Come on. Excuse me. Sorry. Excuse me. Ow! Watch your knees, Sutton. That freaking hurt you, dick. Sorry. Excuse me. All right. Quiet down. Everybody, take your seats. Hey, Kay. Perfect timing, right? You're already late. I'm already bored. Good morning, everyone. All right. Quiet down, please. So, as most of you can probably guess, today the Drisking Preservation Society will be presenting the exciting history of our town. Every year, our seventh grade classes look forward to this assembly and we are very happy to be able to do it again this year. 
If anyone has a question during the course of the lecture, please raise your hand and we'll answer them as time permits. <laughs> like that will ever happen. Now I'd like to introduce you to Mr. Wyatt Dowding, Miss Catherine Scanlon, and of course, Mr. James Prescott. Jimmy Prescott? That's so weird. His dad's been doing this presentation for like 30 years or something. Now, students, I expect you to be respectful and courteous and give your full attention to our guests. The Preservation Society is an honored and even revered institution in Drisking. This is your town, so please take an interest. I'm going to hand it over to Miss Scanlon now. You guys didn't know? Jesus, why do you smell like my garage? Yeah, your parents smoke weed. What? Tom Prescott went crazy like a year ago. Full straight jacket shit. Started screaming about demons in the middle of the Crossley wedding. The middle of a church. Old Jimmy put his dad in the asylum, like the next day. He did the presentation last year, and my sister was here too. Wait, there's a mental asylum around here? I don't like Jimmy Prescott. It gives me the heebie-jeebies. His dad is so much nicer. He's like my grandpa. Seriously, where's his mental asylum? There are no asylums anymore. He's probably just talking about a hospital. Nope. Mental asylum. My dad told me. Hello, Drisking Middle. I see a lot of familiar faces out there. I'm Catherine, and this is my fiancé, Wyatt. Uh, we're going to talk a little about the first settlers of the Ozark area. Who knows what the... You said the story's about Whitney. It is. Did she even go to Drisking Middle? No. She was 16. She went to the high school. We only have another 25 minutes in our session, and I don't know what the history of the city of Drisking has to do with what happened to your sister. I told you, it has everything to do with it. I really want you to feel free to talk about whatever you need to in here, but this honestly feels like you're stalling. Are you stalling? Sam. Yeah. Yeah, you heard me, or yeah, you're stalling. Yeah, I guess I'm stalling. I just, uh... I always hate this part. That means this is an important part, Sam. I know. Would it be easier if I told you what I know, and you fill in the blanks? No. I'll tell you how it happened that day. Okay. But there are things that you need to know from the lecture to understand what happened later. Alexander Drisking started the town. This dude discovered a mother load of iron ore in the Ozarks and settled there with his family to mine and sell it. After a few decades, the Drisking family was mining and refining it before sale. It made him millionaires. And there was a lot of iron in that mountain. Catherine and Wyatt told us all of that and a bunch of other stuff I'm forgetting, but... Then Jimmy Prescott took the stage. Okay, go on. Look, I need you to... He's just... He was very... What you need to know about Jimmy Prescott is that he is extremely charismatic and engaging. I was hanging on to his every word and laughing loud at all his jokes. Kyle was mortified. And what did he say when he was on stage? Mostly he talked about how the Prescotts were related to the Driskings and that after the decline of the town in the 50s, it was the Prescotts who revived it. And this is important? Yes. And was that the end of the presentation? Almost. You in the back, you have a question, kid? Put your goddamn hand down. That's social suicide, man. Yeah, uh, Mr. Prescott, why did the iron mines close? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a great question, kid. Uh, 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 what's your name, son? I can't see you in these lights. Um, Sam. Walker. Walker, huh? Yeah, I believe I met your father the other day at Cleary's office. Welcome to Driskin, Mr. Walker. 
Thanks. And as for your question, well, you know, most of the mines were closed in 51 after a period of, let's call it, extreme unprofitability. Meaning that the mountains simply ran out of iron ore. The mills and the refineries were abandoned. The town suffered for many years. Miners and their families moved away. Stores went out of business. Schools closed. Driskin became a ghost town. It was the end, as far as most people were concerned. But there were a few stubborn families, like the Prescotts, who refused to leave their beloved little town, refused to give up. And after many, many years of hard work, it all paid off. People moved back, the town was profitable again, even evolving into idyllic, eventually becoming the picturesque little haven in the Ozarks that it is today. And you are welcome. Any other questions? Queries, compliments, or flattery, I'm happy, I'll take them all. No more questions? No? Bro. No, not what? Not even you. It's gonna take us weeks to earn back our popularity. We are never popular. What? I thought it was a good question. Of course you, you did. Questions about Triskin? Oh, God help me, I'm surrounded by nerds. All right, students, you may begin to make your way to the cafeteria for lunch. Back rows first. Students in my class, please remember you will have a take-home worksheet to complete tonight about today's presentation. You gonna eat that? My brownie? Yes, Kyle, I'm gonna eat the only edible thing on my tray. What about the mashed potatoes? Do you mean the potato soup? That's all yours. Score! That was so boring. You're never gonna figure out that no one cares about Justine history. Seriously, I fell asleep like three times. Sam seemed to care. Yeah, what was that, dude? I just wanted to know about the mines. Mines are creepy. Maybe we could find one of them and explore it. Nope, they're all blown up. They're blown up? Yeah, some kids died after getting lost in one. So they blew them up? Pretty much. They set off what my dad calls controlled blasts to collapse the caverns. They're all closed off now. Yeah, but when they did, they messed it up. I heard this really accidentally blew up the water table. Whoa, did they use dynamite? No, man, they used C4. I mean, probably. What's C4? It's boom clay. Boom clay. So, like, if the clay is in the water table and we drink the water from that table, then we all have boom clay in our bodies and could explode at any minute? <laughs> That's probably what happens to all the missing people. Just sitting there one day, minding your own business, and then BOOM! <laughs> yeah, and that's where the skin men come from. It explodes their skin off. <laughs> you exploded too much, Kyle. Now you look stupid. Mr. Walker. <laughs> Sam. Sorry, it's Kyle's fault. I need you to come to the office with me. A police officer is here to take you home. Dad, what's happening? Sit down, Sammy. I don't want to sit down. Ramirez wouldn't tell me anything on the right here. What happened? Why is Sheriff Cleary here? Why are all these cops in our house? Sam, sit down. No, just tell me what happened! Samuel David Walker, sit the hell down! It's gonna be okay, sweetie. I promise you. I promise. I'm sorry, Mom. I just... I don't know what's going on. It's okay, Sam. Hi, Sheriff Cleary. Today you call me Killian. Okay. Do you remember my wife, Grace? Hi, Mrs. Clary. Oh, can I get you something, Sam? Water? Some tea? <laughs> Boys his age don't drink tea, Grace. Oh, a soda then. No, I, I just want to know what's going on. <laughs> Wait. No. Um, where? Where's my sister? Where's Whitney? <laughs> Where are you going? Amber Cop. Why? I needed to see. What did you think you would find? 
Do you even remember? Oh, I remember everything from that night. It was so cold, my tears froze on my face. The sky over the treehouse was a dark gray. It looked different when I was alone. Bigger. More imposing in the night. I tried to find her. They told me she never made it to school that day. Whitney! They told me they thought she ran away back to St. Louis with Jay. Whitney! I told them Whitney had a new boyfriend. Dad knew that. She didn't care about Jay anymore. So I ran off when no one was looking to find her. But, uh... Couldn't find her. I was gonna search the whole mountain for her, but the sky was even darker when I left Ambercott. The only light was from the moon. I walked for God, an hour. I was so lost. It was cold. And there were tire tracks on the ground. And from ATVs. It was too dark to really tell, and every time I tried to follow them, I lost them. I couldn't see anything. But I kept calling for her. Whitney! There was nothing. No answer. Not for hours. I was alone. And then I wasn't. said it was a sign on a post pounded into the dirt and it was just there out in the middle of nowhere on no path no trail it had an orange backpack hanging off it I thought I recognized the bag but I wasn't sure because it was just sitting out there on a post with a sign what did the sign say Mile, Mile marker, marker four. four. <laughs> I ran. Forever, I guess. Eventually I figured out the ground was dropping and I was headed down the mountain. It was hours, I think. Stumbling around in the dark, just trying to get down. I found a road. I followed it. No idea where I was. And then a cruiser found me around one in the morning. Dad had sent them out looking for me. It's five. Uh, wow. Yeah, it is. Next week, then. Was her name on the tree? to check a few days later and it was there freshly carved this is not the story that was in your file I know are you ready to talk about what happened to your sister no Sam listen to me I truly believe that whatever happened to Whitney is the crux of your problem and the core issue of your addiction yeah no shit you're going to need to talk about what you know. About what happened to Whitney after she went missing. I can't. Why not? Because I don't know. All I know is that she didn't come home. I think you know more. Everyone who's seen you, all the doctors, and all their notes over and over again, they say, whatever you saw, or whatever you think you saw when you were 17 is... is... 
Look, that event, whatever it was, it's what's keeping you down so deep. Well, maybe I never saw Whitney again. Is that true? I gotta go. It's after five. Sam, do you remember what happened to Whitney? Only on the bad days. Stop. 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 Whitney. Whitney. Whitney! Sam! Sam! Sam, wake the fuck up! Jesus, man, I think you broke my fucking rib. What the fuck? I was sleeping, man. That you were screaming and thrashing. Oh, thrash. You about cracked your headboard in half. That you were having another nightmare. I don't have nightmares. But yeah, you do. They just don't remember because of this shit. Hey, I fucking need that. I'm sure you got a family-sized pack of needles somewhere. <sighs> what the fuck do you want, Eric? Why are you in here? Other than you screaming so loud the cops are probably gonna show up? Yeah, other than that. A girl came by today looking for you. So? And so it's a girl, and I thought you'd want to know. I know lots of girls. Yeah, well, this one was hot. And it seemed important. A hit is always important to a fucking addict. Probably just one of burnout's girls looking for age. I don't think she was one of burnout's girls. I don't think you'd know if she was. And I don't think she was looking for age. I, I don't care. Baraska stars Cole Sprouse as Sam Walker. Additional performances by Lisa Edelstein as Leah Dixon, Charlie Shotwell as young Sam Walker, Mark Derwin as Graham Walker, Zachary Arthur as young Kyle Landy, Lulu Wilson as young Kimber DeStaro, Richard Berge as Killian Clary, James Wellington as Mr. Diamond, Jules Giselle as Phoebe Dranger, Ella Anderson as Paige Berry, Hinden Walsh as young Christy Nanvelt, Jack McGraw as Caden Whittaker, Christian Isaiah as young Phil Saunders, Peyton Kennedy as Whitney Walker, Reese Alterman as young Mike Sutton, Louise Lombard as Mrs. Tverdy, Rebecca Field as Catherine Scanlon, Sean McGuire as Jimmy Prescott, Jama Williamson as Elizabeth Walker, Debbie Hirata as Grace Clary, Bo Knapp as Eric Tucker, Created by Rebecca Klingel. Directed by Stephanie Abel Horowitz and Tess Harrison. Produced by Rob Herding, Dave Henning, Brian Cavanaugh-Jones, Fred Berger, and Cole Sprouse. Production executive, Tess Ryan. Original scoring composition by Darren Johnson. Recorded by Ryan Walsh, assisted by Neely Oftering. Edited by Ryan Walsh and Ben Melchev. Sound design by Maria Mora and Juan David Shapiro Perez for Audio 4 Media. Mix and Mastering by Ryan Sanchez. Casting by Chelsea Block and Marisol Roncalli for Atomic Honey. Script Supervisor, Sam Beasley. Post Coordinator, Rachel Yanover. Assistant Director, Miranda Sampson. Talent Coordinator, James Gelberg. Artwork by Tomer Honka and Bryn Jones. Baraska is a Q-Code production.